As we move to talking about transition metal chemistry in this course, we need to talk a little bit first about some of the definitions that we've become familiar with as it relates to acids and bases. Today, we're going to focus on hard, soft, acid, base theory. But before we do that, we need to talk about our understanding of what is an acid and what is a base. Previously in chemistry courses, you probably learned about the different definitions for acids and bases. The most popular one in general chemistry and likely in organic chemistry was the Bronsted-Lowry definition of acids and bases. In the Bronsted-Lowry definition of acids and bases, we are largely concerned with the transfer of a proton. So one of these reactants are going to be a proton donor, one is going to be a proton acceptor, and when you transfer those protons, what you have is an acid-base reaction, at least according to the Bronsted-Lowry definition. And in this case, we would say that HA, since it donates its proton, is the Bronsted-Lowry acid. B, some base. And on the right-hand side, you have the conjugate acid and base. And in order to discern which was the acid or the base, you're just looking for which one is donating that proton, that was the Bronsted-Lowry acid, which one was accepting the proton, that is the Bronsted-Lowry base. But in our class, and a more complete uh, description of acids and bases is actually the Lewis definition. So from now on, we're largely going to focus on the Lewis definition of acids and bases, which instead of focusing on protons, actually focuses on electron pairs. So in a Lewis acid and base, what you're looking for is which one is donating a pair of electrons and which one is accepting a pair of electrons. In most cases, we can think of this as like a metal. So for our class, we're largely going to focus on looking at different metals or metalloids. And you're going to have some base, which has a pair of electrons. Now this can be a lone pair of electrons. It can also be a pi bond. So for example, ethylene is a Lewis uh, base because it can use those pi electrons to donate. And this is largely going to create what are called Lewis acid base adducts, where you generate effectively a new bond, and this is called an adduct. And the reason that this is a more complete picture of the definition of acids and bases is because it not only encompasses all of the things that would have been Bronsted-Lowry acids, like HA, for example, is accepting electrons from the base, because a base in the Lewis definition is a, an electron donor, and an acid, a Lewis acid, is any electron acceptor. Not only will this encompass things like, you know, phosphoric acid, hydrochloric acid, which accept electrons to abstract that proton, but they also include things like metals. So iron, for example, accepts electrons. That is the definition of a Lewis acid. Now, once we can distinguish between what is a Lewis acid and what is a Lewis base, namely the acids that we're mostly going to be dealing with are going to be metals. And bases, which are largely going to be those electron donors, are what we called ligands. Now this is different than in biochemistry. You may have uh, taken that class previously and you've heard the term ligand. This is going to be different. A Lewis base is any electron pair donor. So once we can identify the Lewis acids and the Lewis bases, we need to also further distinguish them as being hard or soft. So Lewis acids can be both hard and soft and Lewis bases can also be both hard and soft. Now a hard, let's start with Lewis acids for example. A hard Lewis acid is going to be a small acid, a small metal. So think of the early transition metal uh, elements like titanium or sc scandium for example. Those early transition metals are going to be much smaller in their atomic radius than something like gold for example. So gold is going to be much larger and because of that, it actually is more polarizable. And that is the big determining factor as to whether or not something is going to be hard or soft. And this is true for both metals and for our, our Lewis acids or bases or our, like, or our ligands. So a smaller metal is going to be harder than a larger metal. 
Additionally, we need to consider things like the charge of the metal. So in distinguishing between hard and soft Lewis acid-based chemistry, it's more of a qualitative comparison between two different types. So in the case of something that's hard versus soft when looking at charge, a metal that has a high charge is going to be harder than a metal that has a lower charge. So a metal that just has a single positive charge is going to be softer than its counterpart that has more charge. So a metal that's four plus is typically going to be harder than a metal that only is at the one plus oxidation state. Now that same qualitative approach can be taken for Lewis bases as well. They can also be further distinguished into hard Lewis bases and soft Lewis bases. And again, similar to the description of hard and soft Lewis acids, the same same trends hold true for hard and soft Lewis bases. Remember the bases are going to be our ligands or our electron donors. So some uh, Lewis base that's hard is going to be small. So if you think for example like O2 minus has a much smaller atomic radius than something like selenium 2 minus. So selenium is lower on the periodic table. Similarly, we can think of this in terms of the halogens, so the halides when they take on that negative charge. So F minus is going to be much harder than something like chloride, which is going to be harder than something like bromide, which is again going to be harder than something like iodide. So as we move down a column on the periodic table, our atomic radius is getting greater and greater. Additionally, the polarizability of that Lewis base is going to be greater and greater. So the more polarizable, more polarizable, the softer the Lewis acid and base is going to be. The less polarizable, the harder the Lewis acid or base is going to be. Now because this distinguishing factors between hard and soft Lewis acids and bases is, is more of a qualitative approach, it's difficult to really place ones into categories permanently. Oftentimes what we're looking for is the comparison, the comparison between different types of Lewis acids and bases. Now I'm going to show on the screen a table um, for those of you who are interested in, in distinctly categorizing something as being a hard or soft Lewis acid or base, but keep in mind that oftentimes what we're looking for is the comparison between two as to whether or not something is harder or softer. Now let's examine an example where we have some chemical equation in equilibrium. We have HGI plus LIF is in equilibrium with a mixture of HGF plus LII. Oftentimes these questions are going to be looking at things like equilibrium constants. Remember that equilibrium constants are the ratio of the products divided by the ratio of reactants. And this means if you have a K equilibrium constant value that is great, that is very large, then that means that the equilibrium is going to be shifted towards the products. And if you have a very small K value or equilibrium constant, that the equilibrium is going to be shifted to the left. And in other words, the large K values are going to have more products, and the very small K values are going to have more reactants. So in this example, let's think about whether or not this K value is going to be very large, meaning more products, or very small, meaning more reactants. So first thing we need to distinguish is whether or not the Lewis acids and bases are hard or soft. So lithium versus mercury is the first distinction that we can make between which one is a harder or softer Lewis acid. So lithium is an alkali earth metal, in fact it is very high on the periodic table, either the, uh, the second row in fact, and that means that it's going to be very small. So Li plus is going to be much smaller than something like mercury, which is one of the last transition metals. The charges are identical, so we can't use charge as the determining factor, so therefore we need to use size and therefore polarizability. And since Hg or mercury is much larger than lithium, this one is going to be the soft Lewis acid. So this is a soft acid. And lithium, being much smaller, much less polarizable, is going to be a hard acid. Now we can do the same for the ligands contained here. 
and they are both fluoride and iodide. So fluoride and iodide are both halides. They reside on the halogen, the 17th uh, column on the periodic table. Fluoride is going to be much smaller and much less polarizable than iodide. So therefore, fluoride is the hard base, while iodide, being much more polarizable, is going to be a much softer base. Now that we know that, we can use hard soft acid base theory to predict which is going to be more likely to be tightly bound. And in other words, are we going to have an equilibrium that is more towards the products or more towards the reactants? And the key here is that we want to pair up hard and hard, and we want to pair up soft and soft, because these interactions are going to form a much more stable bonding between hard acids and hard bases and soft acids and soft bases. The less, the more, the more weakly coordinated type of bond is going to be hard soft. Okay, so we're looking to pair up both equivalent types of acids and bases. So I know that lithium is a hard acid and therefore it is most likely to form an adduct with a hard base. Similarly, mercury is a soft acid and it is most likely to be more strongly coordinated to a soft base. So therefore, lithium and fluoride is going to be a more stable interaction, and uh, mercury iodide is going to be a more stable interaction. So I notice here that this type of interaction is actually a soft hard, and similarly, the lithium iodide is a hard soft. So those are less favorable. Those are going to form more weakly coordinating bonding, and therefore, since I have a soft-soft interaction and a hard-hard interaction on the left-hand side, this side is going to dominate in our equilibrium. So therefore, we're going to have more reactants than we have products, and therefore, we would expect this to be a very small equilibrium constant that is shifted towards the reactants. Again, this comes because we have paired up the hard-hard and the soft-soft interactions. Even though hard-soft acid base theory is not a quantitative approach, or we're not you know, assigning values to whether or not something is hard or soft, it can be harnessed to do really cool things like separations chemistry. It's also important for things like what is poisonous to you. So let's think about one of those in types of interactions and see how it's harnessed by chemists to actually perform a separation. So let's say that you had water, for example, that contained lead in it. So lead is PB, and let's say that it's in the 2 plus state. So let's say that we had some water with lead in it and we were trying to pass it through a filter that we could actually sequester or completely remove the lead from that water. And let's say that I could design two different types of filters. I could design a filter that has some side chain of thiols, or SH, on it, and some other filter that has side chains of alcohols on it, or OH. Remember that these each have lone pairs on them, and they are going to act as ligands for lead. In other words, they're going to act as Lewis bases. These are the bases towards the Lewis acid of lead. And again, the alcohols also have lone pairs on them. Additionally, you should know that oxygen lies above sulfur on the periodic table. One is a period two element, one is a period three element. So therefore, I know that they are going to behave very similarly. However, the thiol containing the sulfur is much larger, and thus it's going to be much more polarizable. Similarly, I know that if I were to locate lead on the periodic table, I would find that it is a very large Lewis acid. And therefore, I would predict that this is a soft Lewis acid certainly much sulfur, softer than something like lithium or sodium or magnesium even. So if I were to be tasked with creating a filter that could remove lead from water, then I would predict that the lead would actually get stuck or be coordinated, as we'll learn as we move into transition metal chemistry, is the term coordination chemistry, is more likely to get trapped in the filter created with the thiol side chains. 
And this is just a single instance of harnessing Lewis acid, hard soft acid base theory in order to do something useful. You can also think about this in the context of biology. So for example, we know that lead and mercury are both very poisonous to humans. We also know that cysteine is an, an amino acid side chain that contains a thiol on it, contains the SH. And in fact, this is the thiols or the cysteines and proteins are largely responsible for a lot of the quaternary structures that we have in our proteins. So if you were to insert a soft Lewis acid like mercury or lead into a protein, it is more likely to coordinate at those cysteine positions and disrupt and potentially denature proteins.